There are tons of franchises represented in Smash. Now more than ever, with Smash Ultimate bringing every fighter from the series' history together, along with many newcomers. There's also one franchise that actually had a character featured in Smash before its own game even released, and now that franchise has become infamous for featuring so many characters in Smash. That's right, we're talking about Fire Emblem. Boasting a whopping seven characters, Fire Emblem is the third most represented series in Smash Ultimate, only losing out to Pokemon and Super Mario Bros. Starting with Super Smash Bros. Melee, Marth and Roy became the first Fire Emblem reps. Marth had gained popularity in Japan with his appearances in early Fire Emblem titles such as Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, but Melee was his first reveal to Western audiences. Roy, on the other hand, was added to Melee ahead of his debut Fire Emblem game, The Binding Blade, which released the next year, again, only in Japan. Marth and Roy's popularity in Melee is largely responsible for Nintendo's decision to bring the series outside of Japan. Debuting in Path of Radiance on the GameCube and reappearing in its sequel, Radiant Dawn, on the Wii, Ike was added as a new Fire Emblem representative in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Smash 4 delighted Fire Emblem fans by adding three new characters from the series, which had gained much Western popularity by this time. Fire Emblem Awakening's avatar character Robin was added to the base roster alongside Lucina, who mimics her ancestor Marf's moveset. A few years after Smash 4's release, the avatar character from Fire Emblem Fates, Corrin, was added as one of the last two DLC characters. Smash Ultimate added one last Fire Emblem character to the roster, introducing Krom from Fire Emblem Awakening as an Echo Fighter of Roy. Interestingly, Krom has actually appeared in Robin's final Smash and victory screen since Smash 4. So with all of these Fire Emblem characters to choose from, which one is the strongest in competitive Smash? Before we find out, be sure to check out all of the additional Smash content we have to offer on our website, ProGuides.com. You can find guides on every Fire Emblem character there, and even get instant access to experienced Smash coaches via our Play With Pros platform. If that wasn't enough, we've also got exclusive pro courses with top players like the one and only MKLeo. Now on with the video. Marth is the Mario of the Fire Emblem series in Smash, well known for his iconic tipper mechanic that diversifies his otherwise basic moveset. Marth has tons of range, swinging his sword in large arcs to easily outspace opponents. The tip of Marf's sword has considerably stronger damage and knockback compared to the middle of the blade and its hilt, rewarding Marth players for precise, max range spacing. Marf's large, disjointed range makes him excellent at outspacing opponents in neutral, and coupled with his fast recovery results in a character with an adept edgeguarding game. His side special, Dancing Blade, can be adjusted in a variety of ways to launch opponents at different angles. And the tipper on the last hit of this move boasts deadly KO power. His down special is the first counter move featured in the Smash series, which allows Marth to turn another character's attack against them. Responding with his own slash, the hits hard relative to the strength of the move that was countered. Marth has seen some top-level tournament representation in Smash Ultimate, with MKLeo bringing him out as a counter pick. Lucina is Marth's Echo Fighter, using the same attack move set and physics stats, but with adjusted hitboxes. Unlike Marth, Lucina has no tipper mechanic, and her sword does the same damage and knockback regardless of which part of the attack connects. Although this sacrifices the explosive power of Marth's tipper, Lucina becomes a much more consistent character, not requiring as much precision to get maximum reward, which is very useful in fast-paced games. Also, Lucina's damage and knockback are much stronger than any non-tipper hit from Marf's sword, so she still possesses ample KO power. Lucina has seen great results as MKLeo's secondary and formerly one of his mains. She's also used as a counterpick character for many top players such as Nairo, and Proto Banham and Mr. E have many good wins and placings with solo Lucina as well. Roy has a similar moveset to Marth and Lucina, but with wildly different physics and hitboxes. Roy's sword is designed to function opposite of Marf's tipper mechanic. His attacks deal the most damage and knockback at point-blank range near the hilt, whereas the tip of his blade is akin to a light gust of wind, sometimes jokingly referred to as the wet noodle. Because of this, Roy rewards the player for aggression and staying in close range. As for his physics, Roy moves very quickly in the air and falls very quickly. His aerial acceleration is very poor, however, so he can be difficult to slow down once he starts drifting. Roy's fast fall speed grants him a better combo game than Marth and Lucina, with the potential to link multiple up airs and string them into other aerials. His jab is also quite different from Marth, swinging with only one hit that can combo into his back air for a reliable KO confirm. He also has the best death scream in the game. 
Roy has seen solid tournament results in the hands of Tweak, who brought him out at a few tournaments, as well as players such as Goblin and Cola, formerly Salt One. Krom was introduced in Smash Ultimate as Roy's Echo Fighter. Krom lucinifies Roy, removing his sweet spots and sour spots for a consistent strength anywhere on his sword. Like Roy, Krom has great vertical combos and juggling, as well as the jab to back air kill confirm. Besides for the hitbox adjustments, the most notable difference between Roy and Krom is the recovery. Roy's up special is Blazer, a rising slash that travels diagonally upwards. Krom, on the other hand, uses a f I mean... Soaring Slash. Krom's up B is called Soaring Slash, but it's totally Aether. Soaring Slash travels further vertically than Roy's Blazer, but it has almost no horizontal distance whatsoever, making Krom very susceptible to offstage gimps. Soaring Slash is also vulnerable from above, so characters with reliable down airs can interrupt this move during its rather lengthy animation. Krom has seen recent bracket success in the hands of Mr. R, and has acquired great results with players such as Rivers, formerly Shoyo James, and Matty G. Ike finally breaks the mold of all the Marth clones, featuring different moves, physics, and mechanics. Ike is relatively slow in general, but compensates with huge range, even compared to Marth, and brutal KO power. Like Lucina and Krom, Ike has consistent power across his blade. His neutral air is his go-to option, as it has amazing combo potential, eventually leading to consistent kill confirms into up air and back air. Ike's up B, Aether, shares more or less the same weaknesses as Krom's Soaring Slash. They're the same move, guys! But he can also use his side special, Quick Draw, to recover horizontally. World number one player MKLeo actually mained Ike in the early months of Ultimate, winning large tournaments with the character. Since Leo dropped him, Ike's results have diminished significantly, but players like Ryuga still get good wins with the character. Robin is arguably the most unique Fire Emblem character, boasting many projectiles and a health mechanic on his moves. Robin's special moves use tomes for various magical spells. Each of these has a limited number of uses before it will be inaccessible for a short period of time. Robin's neutral special can be charged to access different tiers of thunder spells, from Thunder to Thoron. His sword also features this unique meter mechanic because he actually has two swords. Robin starts the game with the Bronze Sword, which has unlimited uses and can be swung at any time with a tilt input, although it's pretty weak. Once the meter is filled, Robin can use the Levin Sword, which hits significantly harder, but also has a limited number of uses before a cooldown period like with his tomes. Once the Levin Sword is available, a Smash input can be used to switch it from the Bronze Sword. This moveset gives Robin a versatile set of zoning tools, but he's unfortunately one of the slowest characters on the ground and not too fast in the air either. Robin has seen impressive results used by Joel, taking sets off of players such as Mr. E. Finally, Corin mixes sword slashes with pierces from her dragon transformations. Her dragon lunge instant pin technique gives her a long range tool with multiple mix ups as she can pin herself into the ground and follow up with a lunge forward or back, a jump, or by simply returning to the ground. Corin's back air has lots of range and also propels her forward, making this move extremely reliable to space with. She is a fairly strong combo game thanks to the upwards diagonal knockback angle on her forward air that can be linked into itself and finished with an up air. Corin has seen very little tournament representation in Ultimate, besides for Zachary occasionally bringing out the character and his fellow Japanese countryman Keia. Weighing results with each of these characters' strengths and weaknesses, we think that Lucina is the best Fire Emblem character in Smash. The changes to Marth since Melee have made his tipper very unreliable, to the point where even the best Marth players in the world cannot consistently land it when they need to. So, Lucina takes everything else that's great about Marth, amazing range, great frame data, partially invincible recovery, top tier edge guarding, and puts it into a consistent package. Lucina has also seen the best results of the FE reps, winning huge tournaments such as Genesis 6 and taking sets off of many top players. But who do you think is the best Fire Emblem character in Smash? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guides and click that bell to keep up with all of our uploads.